Today we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into the fake PSA cards and slabs that I talked about in my weekly news video the other day. A bit more information has been shared with me since dropping that video and I think it's, you know, quite alarming and there's a lot of things here that need to be talked about because the problem looks like it runs a lot deeper than we initially thought. Now to give you some context, this is my weekly news video from two days ago where I essentially talk about a lot of things. And to give you some context, you know, I plan for these videos maybe a week in advance, obviously. I flag all the good things that have happened within the hobby that week that I think you guys need to know about. And then obviously, right before I just see if there's anything that's immediately dropped for me to talk about. Now, this post from Tiffany Cards where they talked about these fake slabs in question dropped not long before I recorded the video. So I didn't have all the information when I talked about it, right? So basically, this has essentially been flagged by these guys. You need to use Tiffany Cards to try and track uh, like fake cards, fake slabs, so on and so forth, stolen cards, because they do a fantastic job at doing it. He since posted, you know, on my page and said, you know what, read the blood forums. And that's essentially what I did. And, you know, I went through and looked at this and it looks like the problem, like I said a bit earlier, at least I think it did, runs a lot deeper than what we actually think because you've had a seller, this one here on eBay, whose account is now deactivated, Movies and More 777. This is what happens when you try and click on their eBay account. But they were an eBay account of roughly 14,000 sales, 14,000 feedback, which I'll show you in a second. But they've been having, you know, cards where they've faked them, sold them, and try to scam customers. And what do I mean by this specific instance? What has actually occurred? Well, what people do is they'll take like a Michael Jordan rookie card, like you see here. They'll crack it open, take the card out, take the label out, and then put it into a fake slab with the correct label, but the different card, right? A lower graded card to try and scam the customer, right? So they're pocketing the high-end card and they're either putting a fake card or a significantly lower graded card in that slab which is incredibly alarming, especially once you go through and see how many times it's actually happened. Now, they've been doing this through eBay, which might come as a surprise to a few of you, given that some of these transactions occurred in 2022, 2023, 2021. You know, eBay has this authenticity guarantee in place. So how the heck did they try and get this by customers, right? If you, you'd think if, if eBay are doing, you know, the right thing with regards to their program, this card gets shipped to them, they'd have a look at it and say, you know what, this slab is fake, or we can tell us been tampered with what's going on here. Well, like I said in my you know video from maybe a couple months ago now, eBay's authenticity guarantee has a really major loophole. And that is scammers are basically using lots to try and bypass it, right? They'll take this really high-end Michael Jordan card, as you can see here, put it in a lot with a bunch of, you know, shitty, cheap base cards, other, you know, sort of high-end cards, but nowhere near the value of the Michael Jordan. They'll have the one fake card, everything else will be correct, but because it's in a lot, it does not go through eBay's authenticity guarantee which is, you know, a really poor loophole that eBay need to rectify as soon as possible. Now, what's interesting about this as well, the account's no longer on eBay because people have complained about it. It looks like PSA have decertified every single card that this person has maybe sold in the last two years, which is, again, a really, really good thing from them. But the volume of cards you're talking about here is ridiculous. Like, I'm scrolling, and you're going to see it for yourself. There are so many. Obviously, this is being repeated now, but there are so many cards here. There's actually more pages on this thread as well. There's other cards not shown in this thread that look like they've gone through the same seller, you are talking about thousands of cards, right? That's potentially thousands of cards that have been scammed basically out of customers' hands, right? They're basically taking money out of customers' hands and giving them fake cards. This person had 14,000 feedback. That stuff cannot go... Oh, I can't be emphasized anymore, right? That's a lot of transactions. And there's a few other posts in here which talk about maybe the, the last or the earliest card they found was back in 2020. So you're at least talking through you know, three years of cards where this person has been ripping off people, right? And it's taken that long for it to get noticed. It's just completely unacceptable. As you can sort of see here, 14,000 feedback. Again, doing stuff like this, putting things in lots, you know, a Wayne Gretzky rookie card. Yes, it's only 1.5, but they must be putting it with, you know, dollar cards, quarter cards. It's just utterly ridiculous how this kind of thing has gotten to the volume it has and, and, and people have fallen for it. And I really hope there's not people out there that sort of have these cards on hand have put them away in a safe or put them away, you know, on their shelf and completely forgot about it, not realizing that PSA have, you know, decertified these cars. They're basically not genuine anymore, which is really unfortunate because even from a PSA guarantee perspective, you're not protected in this instance because this person has cracked slab. They've taken the card out. Now, some of you might say, well, how are they going about cracking clubs? How are they going about replacing slabs? Wouldn't the people notice that some of these slabs don't feel the same? Well, unfortunately, a lot of these slabs, especially these really high-end ones, they're pretty close to what PSA slabs actually look like, especially some of the older slabs, which some of these look like they've come from, you know, older label cards. They were much easier to fake back in the day. 
to give you some context as well, when you do crack a PSA slab, you can't reuse that slab to seal it and, and then try and sell it because they use this frosting technology where basically when you crack the slab, it, it'll like sort of shatter and frost up throughout the card. So even though you've got like this clear portion of the card, when you crack it, it'll sort of frost up through into there. It's pretty obvious when a PSA slab has been tampered with is the point I'm trying to make. Now, Auburn35, who comments a lot on my videos, he's a fantastic pillar when it comes to this sort of stuff. If you're ever looking for fake cards, or, you know, patched up cards or anything like that, chances are you find it on blowout forums, chances are you're going to find him commenting on the situation and giving, you know, his two cents or his own research. But I believe on the third page, he talks about, you know, people asking stuff about this. How, like, basically, are they reused slabs? Where are the people getting these slabs from? Are they from China? He asks, asks a pretty good point here, and that is, you know, they don't appear to be the same sort of slabs you get off eBay. They don't appear to be the cheapest ones. They appear to be, you know, quite good. You know, they're also located in Anaheim is where this seller was. PSA is essentially there as well. Like maybe we're looking at the WeWag part, right? Maybe it's got something to do with that situation. And some of you might not know what that is, but if you quickly Google that term and PSA, you'll find things like this, where it's an old article from back in 2003. WeWag stands for when it was a game incorporated, who these two individuals were basically committing mail fraud. They were taking cards, essentially what this seller was doing on eBay out of the slabs, and keeping that card for themselves, either putting a fake card or lower card in there, resealing it with a fake slab, and then trying to, um, you know, defraud people. And they've been sentenced and charged with that. So you can sort of read this for yourself. There's a bit more information on the internet with regards to this case. So you can look at that yourself. Again, I'll put the link down in the description below. But you're talking here about, you know, a really significant issue. You've got like this one right here from back in 2020. Very clearly, once again, based on what these people have said, a fake card. It's also been deactivated by PSA which should tell you everything you need to know. It's scary to think that a seller with this much feedback, right, had 14,000 in 2022. How many cards were actually out there, right? This is a systemic problem. This is incredibly pervasive with regards to PSA's population of cards. You are talking about a large number of cards here. It's not just a handful. You're talking upwards of 10,000 cards, potentially, that have gone through this process. Now, that is a lot of cards when you think about, you know, the population of some of these you know, high-end cards, like this Ty Cobb, as an example, like that Michael Jordan rookie card. Yes, there are a lot more, maybe not of the Ty Cobb, but a lot more of these cards being graded in the last couple of years with regards to the boom. But you're talking about a large chunk of <laughs> these pop reports potentially now being tainted. How do you get the comfort that this sort of stuff is not more pervasive than what this one seller is doing? How do we know how many cards this guy hasn't sold at card shows? You'd like to think at a card show, people can sort of touch and feel the cards and find this sort of stuff out for themselves and, and, and identify pretty quickly that the slab's fake. But guys, people are too quick to trust. As I've said before, your biggest problem when it comes to the hobby and you trying to avoid scams is these scammers, they're really good at trying to manipulate you, especially if it's face-to-face, -face, right? And they're really good at trying to get you to like uh, forget essentially what's happening in front of you, right? They're, they're, what's the, uh, the word I'm looking for? They're really good at the art of deception, right? So I'm very concerned to see this many things be sold on eBay that turn out to be fake and decertified. How many have been sold in person? How many, how many have been sold on eBay that have not been flagged by PSA? Have they been able to pull the records from eBay and see every PSA slab that's been sold by this person? Has eBay given that to PSA? Do they have the ability to do that, to check that, to inspect that? Because if that hasn't happened and you've got no track record of some of these cards that sold before, you know, 130 point can go back to, right? Can go back past eBay's policy because eBay, obviously, after like a year or two, you can't search for that card anymore. You don't find the auction. You find the details, but you don't find the pictures. If that, if that doesn't exist, how many cards are out there that we don't know about, right? How many cards have been sold on eBay, taken to a card show and, and sold to some poor schmuck that doesn't know any better, Right. I'm very, very confident that some of these cards are sitting in people's hands and they don't know that they're fake. They don't know that they've been slab swapped. They don't know that it's a fake slab. They don't know that it's been decertified. And again, a very scary problem, but like I say all the time in this chat, I don't say this stuff to try and scare you or say the hobby's bad or anything like that. I say it to avoid buying things like this where you've got patch swap cards. Like it just goes and goes and goes, this thread. Like it's only four pages. Plot threads usually go a lot longer than this, but it's it's just freaking scary. I say this stuff to you so you can sort of be educated and be a bit more aware to make sure that you too do not get scammed. People are out there trying to milk you. People are out there trying to take advantage of you. Just wake up to it. Be aware of it. When you see things like this, share it with your friends. If you know people that collect vintage cards, share it with your friends. Share it to your Discord servers. Share it to your Facebook groups. Because if anyone has bought from this seller in the past that you know, they need to go very quickly 
and determine whether that card, you know, is slab swap. They need to do their research immediately. They need to go under with a fine tooth comb, magnifying glass, do whatever, do whatever you can to get comfort that the card you bought from this person is genuine. Now, you'd like to think with 14,000 sales, there probably is some genuine sales in there because that's how you would probably try and manipulate this business as much as possible, have good sales in there, have fake sales every now and then to try and make it so you, your store become popular, people keep buying from you, you wouldn't be selling 100% fakes because you get found out pretty quickly, but maybe that's what this person did. So again, my message to you is do that research and let me know down in the comments below if you've unfortunately bought from this person, if you know anybody that has, or if you know any more information with regards to this story. Like I said, please check out the thread, share your information because this kind of stuff is invaluable for the hobby. People like Tiffany Cards, Auburn 35, Blowout Forums are invaluable for the hobby. We need this sort of stuff. So like I said, share your thoughts down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.